Hi, this is John Linnebal, and this is Breaking Math Part 4, Ratios, Compound Interest, and more. Here's my contact information, and if you like this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Walt Jr.'s College Fund. Unfortunately, Walt knows he's very sick and going to die soon, so he asks his investor friends to invest $9,720,000 for Walt Jr.'s College Fund and general living expenses. That is nine million seven hundred twenty thousand dollars the 18th birthday which is 10 months and two days from today you will give him this money in the form of an irrevocable trust you will tell him that it is his to do with as he sees fit but with the hope that he uses it for his college education and for the betterment of his family. Walt. Walt's friends agree that's a great idea and invest the money in an interest-bearing account that pays 1% per year compounded monthly. The compound interest formula is as follows. Here it is right here. A, the amount that you end up with, is equal to P, the principal investment, times 1 plus R over N. R is going to be the nominal interest rate. If it's 1% a year, that's going to be 1% over N, the number of times it's compounded per year. Since it's once a month, that's 12 times. And then it's taken to the NT power, so that's 12 times the number of years. We're looking at one year, so it's 12 times 1. So let's put the numbers into the equation here. So A is equal to $9,720,000 times 1 plus 0 0.01, that's 1% over 12, and then it's going to be times 12, the number of months per year, um, times the number of years, what they we're looking at, which is 1. Normally I wouldn't put the 1 here, but I want you to see what's going on here. So the time period, T is one year, P is the initial investment or principal, the $9,720,000, R is the interest rate, 1%, and 12, of course, is the number of months in a year. So the part of the equation after 9,720,000, so this part here, when I work, is 1.01, blah, 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 when I work it out on a calculator. And in case you don't believe me, we can do it right here. So let's shrink that a little bit. We're going to take 0 0.01 over 12. We agree that is this. And then we add 1 to it. And we get this. And then we take this to the 12th power. And we get the 1 point blah, 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 blah. So you can see it matches 1.10496, you know, that a 596.0887. Basically, a lot more decimal points than you really need, but I like to round at the end. So, we're going to multiply this times 9720000. So, $9,720,000, and we get 9817646. So, 9817646. Then, 73, go 739. So, it should be rounded up to 9817. You know, nine million eight hundred seventeen thousand six hundred forty-six dollars and seventy-four cents. But in banking land, also known as the real world, they would round it down to nine million eight hundred seventeen six hundred forty-six seventy-three because they're not even going to give you that much extra money that you didn't earn. Which makes sense. Losing even that much money enough times is going to mean that they lose money and they don't stay in business at some point. So. <clears throat> Excuse me, they're not going to do that. Anyway, so Walt Jr. can get 97646 and 73 dollars per year. You know, and what we can do is here we're just going to subtract 9720000 and poof. We get 97646.73. So, all right, he's losing about uh you know, a tenth of a penny to the bank, but that's still a pretty good deal. So anyway, <clears throat> excuse me, Walt can get $97,646.73 a year without losing a penny of his $9,720,000 principal. All right, let's move on. Hmm. Da, da, da. All right, <clears throat> so here we have the estimated cost of attendance at the University of New Mexico for the 2020-2021 academic year that we're reaching the end of here. 
So at the main campus, which I believe is in Albuquerque, those of you out there who can correct me, please correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, it's at the Albuquerque campus or whatever the main campus is. Looks like tuition and fees in state is 88.63, room and board is 10.262, IT fees 100, AS Associated Students at the University of New Mexico is 50, so the direct cost is 19,229, and then the living expenses, books, supplies, blah blah blah. Well, I guess books and supplies, miscellaneous, transportation, indirect costs, subtotal is 544.42. So the total estimated cost of attendance is about $24,667. So we see that basically Walt Jr., he can easily pay for UNM, assuming he has average costs, etc., and still have plenty of money to spend during the year. If he subtracts $25,000 from $97,646.73, that's $72,646.73. So that would be lots of gas for his Dodge Challenger, etc., and interest and everything like that. Uh, insurance, I mean. He'd be better off keeping this money where it's making interest, but he could also make other investments with whatever excess money he doesn't spend, such as stocks and bonds. But even before that, he should probably use a good portion of that to take care of his mother and baby sister. She's going to have to go to college, too, and she's going to have expenses. And You know, Skyler probably isn't making it great after what happened to Walt and everything. Walt Sr. So, anyway, Walt can definitely do well with this money. The fireworks show. Walt wants to show off his new M60 firework and firecracker launcher to his friends who live out in the desert. He buys a belt of 100 firecrackers and fireworks to be fed through his launcher automatically so he can sit with his pals while they watch slash hear him. Or hear them, rather. For every four firecrackers that only make sound, there's a firework at the end that leaves a white trace after it. What percentage of the belt is loaded with fireworks rather than firecrackers? So we have one firework plus four firecrackers is going to be five in what we could call a series. After the fifth, the firework is shot, a new series starts with four more firecrackers, then another firework. Since the ratio of fireworks to firecrackers is one to four, you know, one, you can write it as one colon four or like a fraction one over four, the total number of fireworks and firecrackers in a series is one plus four equals five. So the percentage of fireworks is 1 over 1 plus 4 times 100%, which is 1 fifth times 100%, or 20%. And that's your answer. So it's important to remember that if the ratio is 1 to 4, you have to add them together, so it really becomes 1 out of 5 is whatever the 1 is. If you don't remember that, you're going to make mistakes where they ask you to turn ratios into fractions or percentages, so please don't forget that for the SAT or the ACT. The fireworks show continued. Walt decides to use a longer firecracker slash fireworks belt for his launcher. The firing rate of an M60 firecracker launcher is approximately 500 firecrackers or fireworks per minute. When Walt uses the longer belt for a fireworks show, the belt is empty in 30 seconds. How many firecrackers and fireworks total were on the belt? We know the distance, it's the length of the belt in fireworks or crackers, is equal to the rate, which is 500 firecrackers per minute times time. So 30 seconds is equal to one half of a minute. So we have one half of a minute times 500 fireworks dash firecrackers per minute. So we see the minute units cancel out, and then you get one half times 500. So that equals 250 fireworks and firecrackers. So that's one kind of rate problem you might see on the SAT or the ACT. Always know that distance equals rate times time or work equals rate times time. You might see that somebody mowing a lawn might be work, something like that, or firing off firecrackers or something like that. Did you find this video useful? Please like it and subscribe to this channel. Neither action costs you anything. You'll be alerted about my new videos. Why do I care? It's simple. YouTube doesn't let me share any ad revenue unless I have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of view time in a year. While many people are watching these, I don't have 4,000 hours of watch time. I also don't have quite 1,000 subscribers. I actually am closing in pretty close, even though it says I don't have anywhere near, but it's still not quite there yet. So if you subscribe, you're really helping me out. For the same reasons, you're not only welcome, but encouraged to share links to this video, put it in playlists, etc. I'm always happy to read and respond to constructive criticism or suggestions for new videos.
I'd appreciate your input. I reserve the right to delete comments from and block those who specialize in destructive criticism. You know, trolls, or things that are off topic, you know, spammers, disturbed people. You can contact me on my cell phone, it's 415-623-4251, and my email is john at johnlinneval.com. My mail is 1859 Powell Street, number 109, San Francisco, California, 94133. Thanks for watching, and my contact information follows. Contact me, Facebook, Instagram, email, phone. Okay, Facebook, it's just facebook.com forward slash tutoring, all one word. Instagram, instagram.com forward slash john.lenabal.tutoring. Phone number, this is my office number, 415-986-7355. Email is john at johnlenabal.com and the website is www.johnlenabal.com. And I also have a site, testpreparation.locals.com. Legal disclaimer. Any use of copyrighted material falls under the fair use exceptions to the Copyright Act of 1976, 17 United States Code, Section 107. See also Campbell v. Acuff Rose Music, 1994, 510 United States Reports, 569. So please don't sue me, Cinnabon, Better Call Saul, Breaking Bad, or any other copyright or trademark owners who have watched this video. It's fair use. All right. With that, I hope you have a nice day.